Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Wins22, joined by By Night. By Night, are you there, man? All right, just waiting for By Night to join the stream, and we will get right underway with our first, or I'm sorry, our second matchup of the day is Miracosa High School taking on Walnut. Uh, Miracosa on the left, and we have entered the pick ban phase for these two teams. We're already. Um, wait, we're on the pick ban phase? We are in pick ban right now, sir. Uh, so far, no bans have come through. Um, again, this is Wince. I am joined by By Knight. And first ban going to be Morgana from Miracosta. Right, it appears as though my client might be frozen or something because it still shows me in the lobby of the match. So All right, you well, keep on going. I'll try to work this out. All right, yeah, you you uh, restart your client. I will take our lucky viewers uh, through this pick ban phase. Thank you again for joining us. Um, and, yeah, so we're going to see a Vi as the second ban. Um, so far, nothing to... You know, crazy being locked in, not able to say one way or another whether these are sniper bands or overall. Although that Morgana um, could be a sniper band, could very well be um, an attempt to just sort of secure one of the more powerful supports for themselves. As Miracosa do have the first pick after the band phase is done, uh, it's going to be a Rumble ban as well. And Alrighty, I'm all set up now in awesome. the in the in the champ select. Joined it at long last, thank God. <laughs> all right, well, um, yeah, go ahead and and tell us what you think of these bands. So far, we've got two top laners, uh, a jungle, and you know, Diana is a pretty versatile champion that we've seen, like you know, in top lane, mid lane, and you know, possibly even jungle. Although I suppose that's probably more aimed at a top or mid slot. Yeah, Rumble is one of the champions that has a lot of damage, especially around a level 6 dragon fight. So it is possible that if uh, Mira Miracosa wants to try and grab an early dragon, they wouldn't want that, that Rumble top on the side of Walnut because with Teleport Rumble ult, you can absolutely turn a especially a level 6 team fight. Uh, Morgana, just a very, very strong champion, both in the support and mid lane roles. A lot of CC coming out. So they're just trying to get rid of that one. Diana is an interesting ban. Uh, Diana is one of those champions that can easily be shut down early on because she does lack that range and she is relatively squishy and needs to dive in order to, to pick up kills. But uh, if she does get ahead, she can be very, very dangerous. So uh, an interesting ban there, but I can definitely see the reasoning behind it. Uh, but it looks like there's just one first pick. Uh, on the side of Miracosa, very strong jungle pick right now, one of the best. And then on the side of Walnut High School, we have a Janna and a Nidalee coming out, two very strong champions as well. Yeah, the the Sejuani, right off the bat, you know, first three picks, we can already get a sense of what these teams want to do. Sejuani, one of the better team fight junglers, builds uh, Stray Tank, obviously the new Cinder Hulk tank, or I'm sorry, jungle item, uh, is really given a lot of viability to and and breadth to the jungle in terms of you know bringing tank junglers back into the meta um we've seen sejuani uh several times lately competitively um but as i said you know it, it sort of tells a little bit about what they want to do we can see them hovering jinx uh and brom both also exceptionally good team fight champions um followed by you know the first pick sejuani followed by a janna and in italy uh, Janna able to help an entire team just sort of kite away. Nidalee obviously wanting to move backwards until landing that perfect spear that can go in, get the assassination. And if it's followed by this LeBlanc pick, that would be two um, pretty strong AP assassins on the side of Walnut. Um, One thing I want to point out is how well the Nidalee and the Janna actually synergize. Nidalee is one of those shamans that wants to poke, that wants to get Miracosa low before an actual engage happens. And Janna is so good at helping Nidalee achieve that goal because Miracosa isn't going to want to just stand there and allow Nidalee to continually poke them down. And when they try to engage, Janna has so much disengage that she can pretty much say, nope, nope, you're not going to engage on us. 
And Nidalee is going to continue to poke on you guys. Yeah, and speaking of poke, the support Velkaz, I'm assuming support, that could very well be a, a mid lane um, Velkaz, uh, paired with the Graves, um, very, what do you, what do you think of, do you think this is Velkaz support or, or could it be a Velkaz mid lane? Well, because of the Janna, it's most likely not going to be a Velkaz support. Janna is most likely going to be, going to be fulfilling that support slot. So it will probably be a Velkaz mid lane and then a jungle Nidalee. And we'll most likely see a tanky or top later coming out on the side of Walnut High School. But I'm actually really interested to see how how this team composition is going to play out for Walnut because it's very specific in how they have to play it. They definitely cannot all out team fight against Costa's uh, against Miracosta High School's uh, team composition because Miracosta has such a hard engaged team composition with the Shizwani, with the Lissandra, and then the Brom knock up into the Yasu ultimate like. Mira Costa is looking to team fight, whereas Walnut High School is going to be looking for more of a disengaged poke oriented team composition here. Yeah, and you know that Yasuo pick is interesting. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, adds a lot to the uh, team fight potential. But being that the Thresh, the Thresh Prince, being on Brom, um, is really his only source of a knock up in this entire team. I'm a little bit worried about the composition's functionality in that, you know, if for some reason Braum is too low to be able to get on the front line and throw down a Glacial Fisher, he's got to rely solely on himself to be able to get that knockup uh, to proc the Last Breath Ultimate. Yeah. Velkaz right now repping the Summoner Hill makes me wonder... Okay, no, 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 they, they just switched. All right, so yeah, it definitely will be a Velkaz middle. Janna support with that exhaust. And yeah, this, this is going to be an interesting lane matchup. Velkaz is going to have a lot of poke ability onto the Yasuo, but the Yasuo is all in onto the Velkaz. is going to be very scary. Hikari is definitely going to have to play this one smart, not be too aggressive. Because Yasuo is going to be able to absolutely melt Velkaz in the wrong situations. On the other side of things, Yasuo's wind wall does not actually block Velkaz's alt. So if Velkaz falls, or if Yasuo falls low, Velkaz is going to easily be able to alt the Yasuo uh, to his to his death. Uh, but I think a lot of this is going to depend on whether or not Alfurius is going to be able to provide more pressure in that jungle or whether or not I Am Sexy Pants is going to be able to. Because I feel like whichever team wins this laning phase is going to have a massive advantage as both of these team compositions can snowball very heavily either way. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at both teams right now and team comp wise... I really like what Walnut has done. I mean, as you mentioned, it really comes down to their ability to perform to what their team composition wants to do. Um, you know, that Nidalee, the Velkaz, the Janna, all focus on sort of kiting backwards. And then you throw in Maokai there, who's going to be able to peel for uh, so much of his team and just help them sort of move backwards. But the hard engage coming from Miracosa is so strong with that Lissandra, with that, with that Sejuani. It's going to be really a, a battle of wits in, in the middle of team fights. Um, and frankly, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from either team, but dive cops, in my opinion, um, are a little bit easier to perform on. You know, it's easier to move forward and say, focus this person rather than move backwards while also throwing out all your abilities and trying to focus that way. Um, you know, Miracos is going to be able to say, hey, Graves is out of position. Go, glacial prison followed by a ice prison or a, a you know the ice tomb or a frozen tomb. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting my my uh, fresh lord ultimates mixed up. We do have three fresh lord uh, members coming from Miracosa as well, so definitely repping winter on that side. Um, but we are into the delay. Um, any final thoughts before we get into this match? Oh, just a quick shout out to our sponsors as we wait for this game to start. Uh, Tespa, Loot Crate, Newegg, MSA, Rocket, Jinx, and Twitch. Without them, High School Star League would not be possible. But we will be right back as soon as this game gets underway. Don't go anywhere.
All right, well, we are back as the champions load on to Summoner's Rift. This is Miracosa versus Walnut. And I am Wins22, joined by By Night. You ready for this match, man? I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to see a, uh, a pretty epic showdown. This should definitely be a really exciting match in Wins. I am definitely looking forward to it. It is the match between Miracosa and Walnut High School. Some very solid players on both sides here. Diamond players on both sides, as well as a few platinum players uh, scattered between. And you never know what you're going to get out of high school Star League teams. Anywhere from bronze to challenger players have played on these high school teams, as you never know what talent is going to be found at what school. But this should be a pretty evenly matched game. And it looks like there is going to be a little bit of an invade uh, coming out, possibly from the side of Miracosta. Yeah, I, all five members hit by that Howling Gale from Janna. Repping that forecast Janna skin. That's one of my favorite skins. This skin is hilarious. Um, but yeah, they will opt to go back to their own jungle. Uh, Summoner Romney and I am Sexy Pants. Looking like they are going to do a red buff start, which is actually a little bit interesting. Oh, no, they're going to move over to Krugs. Um, but we do see um, Captain Spyro possibly going to take those Razor Beaks and try to get an early level 2 advantage over Lissandra. Yep, so in the top lane, we do have a Lissandra versus the Maokai. Uh, Maokai is going to be looking just to try and get really really tanky in this matchup he probably won't have too much kill pressure onto the onto the lissandra his main job is just going to be to survive and farm but definitely that early level two will help him in that lane um and he will be able to back teleport in with more health pots more mana pots which will allow him to sustain quite a bit better i think the most exciting matchup though in this game is going to be this mid lane between the yasuo and the velkaz yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I, I'm thinking, I, you know, I don't really know what the standard starting items are, but I find it a little bit interesting that uh, is that them starting those Brawler's Gloves on Yasuo, um, just opting for a little bit more critical strike chance, um, which could be all the difference if he is able to jump on Hikar. I don't actually agree with that buy, although it does make more sense on the Yasuo compared to other champions. Uh, but the early level 2 coming out on the side uh, of um, Walnut High School, and they do bring some early aggression, but Miracos is going to hit level 2 as well and respond with some aggression of their own. Yeah, and that trade looked like it went poorly for Walnut, but in actuality, the Thresh Prince did blow his exhaust onto Graves and just Childish is still sitting full health looking like they're gonna actually hit level 3 before them so I'm gonna have to give that trade uh, to Walnut. So for those of you guys who do not know the reason why Brawler's Gloves is better on a Yasuo than any other champion is because Yasuo does have a passive which causes his critical strike chance to be doubled. So while Brawler's Gloves no normally would only give your champion 8% critical strike chance, it does give Yasuo 16% critical strike chance, so it does make it a lot better item. The thing is, you can't really rely on 18% crit chance to win trades. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, I'm going to start this item and hope I get a few lucky crits to win an all-in. Whereas most of the time with Yasuo, he has enough damage that if you were to start with something like Doran's Blade or Longsword Health Pots, it's going to end up a lot better for you. First of all, it gives you the extra attack damage to help you farm. And sometimes the crit can actually mess up your farm uh, in, in the early farming phase. And also, it's just going to be more consistent damage, not relying on, oh, there's an 18% chance that hopefully I can crit. Because you might have a fight where you auto attack 10 times and don't get one crit, because every single auto attack, it only has an 18% chance to crit. Right. Well, now, so I have a question. The Yasuo Q is essentially two auto attacks in a straight line. You know, some, a sort of small skill shot. So then, would each Q have a technically a 
a crit strike chance of 36. I believe it's I, I believe it's still the eight, just the 18% critical chance. But 18% oh. chance on both of them. There's a some serious aggression in the top lane. Lissandra using that glacial path to get out of there. Um, I mean, no, I, I mean, I'm really, really kind of interested. I would, my first instinct would be to agree with you about the Brawler's Glove being an interesting starting item choice. Um, ooh, man, that's very going to land. Um, but that being said, you know, I'd love to know, you know, if perhaps some of our Twitch viewers can do the, the theory crafting and the math for us, you know, what, um, maybe are some advantages to that because you have to think that he's just not really nearly going out there with this choice and it's not you know super aggressive there's got to be a little bit of thought behind it so i would love to know exactly what that is um, yeah, I, mean, I think i think he's really just trying to get a few lucky crits because i mean one or two lucky crits and a fight in a duel between velkaz can cause velkaz to fall super low super quick because velkaz not one of those shamans with a lot of defensive stats yeah, and both mid laners have run out of potions, so the sustain game has started. You know, Velkaz is doing a lot better job farming overall, though he is getting ganked by I am sexy pants. Nothing's really gonna come of that. That was Velkaz can just kind of edge towards the top side of the map there, and really is in no danger. But overall, uh, a big farm advantage coming out for Velkaz. Uh, also, a slight farm advantage coming out for Maokai in the top lane. A small wow. farm advantage wow. for Italy in the mid lane as well, and yeah, a, a kill coming out. You called it. I mean, that, because he took those brother gloves and it didn't pay off for him early, the incessant poke from Hikari, able to just combo him down, finishing off as soon as he hit level 6, throwing out that life form, disintegration ray, and meanwhile, I gank your bush is going to follow that glacial path into the top lane, but a twisted advance is going to save Captain Sparrow from that damage, and he's actually able to pick up that kill. So that was very, very well played from Captain Sparrow on uh, Spyro, excuse me, on Maokai. But that will be the first dragon taken at seven minutes. That's an early first dragon. Yeah, that is a really big dragon pick up there for Walnut High School. It's going to allow the threat of five dragons if they can continue to pick them up to come a lot sooner. But a big all in coming in from the graves. We saw the burst in the last game. This time, not quite able to get the damage down needed, the Thresh Prince with a very nice Braum Shield going up, blocking a lot of the damage that would have gone onto the Jinx and definitely picked up that kill for Graves. But Graves not quite level 6 there, means he doesn't quite have the burst required to pick up that kill onto Jinx. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame that they didn't um, have the level 6 there. They're still level 5, so they may have been a uh, good ways off of it. But that trade right there gave them a serious edge in lane. Jinx is now going to miss this entire wave of minions. Graves has gotten himself a 10 CS lead, and up until that point, it had been tied. So really, some good stuff coming from Choi Soo Young and just Childish. Uh, meanwhile, keeping an eye on this mid lane, the tornado hits, and he is going to go in with the last breath. Is Hikari going to be able to kite away? Oh my gosh, the burst coming out was so immense. The ignite went down. Totally negated by that heal, and that was good. That, that was a clean victory for Hikari. And meanwhile, I am sexy fans comes in, blows the flash, flashes forward, but the ultimate is still up. Life, life form disintegration, right? Gonna take down Sejuani. So that is now three kills on this Belkai, all of them solo. That was essentially, you know, a delayed 2v1, Frozen 2 being used for some self preservation by I Gank Your Bush. And a lot of these lanes looking like they're going heavily in favor of Walnut. Every single lane definitely is going in their favor. And man, it's already starting to snowball the game so hard. Almost a 3,000 gold lead in favor of Walnut High School only nine minutes into this game. They also already have a dragon and they have massive CS leads in almost every lane as well. Yeah, and we can see the strength being used right here in the bot lane. Oh my gosh, the burst coming out from Just Child is he's going to take down Jinx and now they turn their aggression on to the Thresh Prince. Rom goes down, double kill, going over to Just Child. Yeah, and with a 3-0 mid laner, a 2-0 bottom lane, and then a 1-0 top lane, this game is not looking good for Miracosta. 
they're trying their best, but just falling slightly behind in every lane. And when you're falling behind in every single lane, while it might only be small leads in every lane, all three lanes add up and are are adding up to a very big lead right now for Walnut High School. And a dive comes down in this bottom lane. A third kill actually going to Graves. Jinx Rocket comes out, but it only forces Graves to heal and no response kill. 7-0 in favor of Miracosta. Yeah, and Alfieri is doing a really good job right now of just, you know, being there to snowball that lane a little further with a successful dive onto I Am Sexy Pants. But frankly, it hasn't really had to do all that much. As you mentioned, all three lanes just winning on their own has enabled her to just just go around and get vision. Look at the vision. You can see a deep, deep ward place. That was put down by Alfarius in that southern jungle. And, you know, it can be... Oh, man, we got some aggression going in. I gank your bush. Goes in on the Captain Spyro, taking all the minion aggro, as well as the arcane smash. That's going to be another kill for Maokai. Uh, that was a very questionable all-in coming out from Lissandra there, because she had the mana for that one skill, and then no more mana after that. So she went in, and she's like, I'm going to have to kill you with auto attacks now, and it just did not work out. Yeah, this is this is turning into one of the faster games. I've passed it 8-0 at 11 and 11 minutes and 20 seconds and a nearly 6k gold lead i mean that's that's 30 minutes stuff so for that to be happening before the 12 minute mark is pretty incredible um definitely snowball looking like it's moving hard down the mountain in favor of walnut high school um but yeah you know going back to uh how furious on italy and italy is a very aggressive early game jungler you know has the early game advantage over i am sexy fans but it's a very mature decision that when your all your lanes are winning, as a jungler, just know like, hey, I really don't have to do anything. I don't have to make any crazy dives, any crazy plays. Just go through, get vision, and help my team secure the snowball. But we do see four members of Miracosa heading to the ball lane. A very timely monsoon and flash avoiding the glacial prison. The Glacial Fisher though coming down from the Thresh Prince and the Exotic can be popped. I don't think it's enough. Is that them tries to get the proc for his last breath, but it would have been a question for the team to follow anyway. And meanwhile, in the mid lane, Nidalee and Belkaz are just doing work. Barreling down mid, maybe gonna take this tier two mid turret as a four man gank is unsuccessful thanks to some very, very good play from Choi Su Young. Choi Su Young did a phenomenal job there. Absolutely making the gank pointless, useless, nothing coming out of that one. And they lose a second tier mid tower for that. That absolutely opens up the map and completely gives Walnut control. And they're definitely going to be able to pick up the second dragon here. Uh, we might see Nidalee and Velkaz back before going this dragon, although I feel like at this point they could literally just rush the dragon and get it relatively easily. Although Nidalee, feeling confident enough in her team to just say, you know, I'm just going to farm a bit. We don't really need the dragon right now. Yeah, I mean, Walnut is still really flexing their muscles now. Uh, Janna able to just continue to get ward coverage. Just childish, totally safe to just sit in the lane. Has uh, amassed a 30 CS lead over Jinx. Has a pickaxe over her. So Summoner Romney doing an all right job of staying in this one. They still have um, a decent amount of HP on that turret. Um, but I mean, you know, they they tried these these moves to sort of swing the game back in their favor and you know being unsuccessful in that gang oh my gosh just childish takes down jinx in that one and just showing the strength they have in that bot lane um and now they're positioning for their second dragon at 14 minutes what most surprises me so far about this game is the fact that maokai was able to win this top lane and he might not even die here. It really depends. Yeah, no, it looks like he is going to fall. There's a lot of ultimates coming out here. But that kill is traded for a dragon, which honestly I think is worth it. Three members of Miracosta High School having to go top to make that play onto Maokai. They lose a dragon because of it. Also take a lot of damage in the bottom lane. Most likely going to lose the bottom tower as well. Um, Brahma in a bad spot here. He's definitely going to die. 
Yeah, he is going to go down. We'll see who they give this kill to. It's going to be just childish. One more auto attack is going to do it. That's going to be the kill for him. 10 to 1 total kills uh, and a nearly 10k gold lead. Uh, all the... Uh, I'm sorry, not all the outer turrets are down the second tier. Oh, man! The life form disintegration ray is going to miss. Akari in a bad spot. Now the teleport coming out from my gankier bush. He's going to flash away. The Q misses, though. No ice strike going to do it. Keeps going. Glacial prison hits, but he's able to keep kiting. Super Mega Death Rock is going to come in, but only gets one big uh, Maokai, and that's going to be an another ultimate wasting. So... You know, a two for nothing after Hikari was just in a terrible, terrible fight. Totally outflanked. Uh, now Captain Spyro trying to throw down a lot of damage. Is that them? Gets the proc onto Just Childish, but he does not have the damage. Sauce going to go down. The Thresh Prince wisely going to hop away from this one, but the flash board with the Arcane Smash from Captain Spyro. He gets locked down by some choppers, and that's going to get a kill over to Summoner Rocket. This game is absolutely just spiraled out of control right now in favor of Walnut High School. Miracosa is doing their best to try and make plays, but they're just so far behind in every lane that there's really nothing they can do. It is now over a 10,000 gold lead in favor of Walnut High School. Three towers have already fallen, two in the mid lane, one in the bottom lane. And if you're our Miracosa High School right now, like what, what are you thinking? What? type of strategy or or what type of play can really be made to come back in this one i i don't know if there is anything they can do and try to, to try to win this game still they do have a late game or uh, they do have a jinx which will scale much greater into the late game than the graves but at this point graves is so far ahead that they would literally have to reach like 45 minutes for the jinx to reach a place where she's stronger than graves yeah I and i similar to the i'm sorry for cutting you off um that was fine but, but the uh the, the liverpool game that we ca casted uh, earlier, you know, they had a massive lead, and yes, the other team had a composition that could outscale if you got to that point. But I think we are again in a position where one team is just way too far ahead. Um, and you know, you you brought up the question, you know, if you are Miracosa, what do you do in this situation? Um, and you know, sadly, I, I have to say, I think you kind of have to count this one as a as a loss. And the question now becomes, what do you do to try to salvage a point from this series? Um, so I think, you know, take this time to sort of talk to your teammates, go over some strategies. Why, why did this not work? Was it just their lanes were stronger than us? We need to pick stronger lanes. Um, and do we, you know, perhaps throw out the forfeit? I mean, I'm not, I'm one to pretty much never forfeit. That glacial prison is going to miss us. We see a lot of aggression and just the ability to cut away also right now from Walnut, uh, is so massive. Um, but yeah, you know, take this time to sort of do a little bit of in-game analysis um, because, and, 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 and don't, you know, sometimes it's worth the forfeit, if you know what I mean, because then you, you don't put yourself through the stress that, you know, this game could easily last 35 minutes. They could drag this out, but, you know, there's, I got to put it at like a 95% chance, 95% chance that it's going to go over to Walnut and you know why cause yourself that aggravation um, and you can just say alright well we messed up that game let's go back into champ select fix our mistakes and see what we can do in the next match. I mean just childish right now with already a zeal and an IE not a single completed item for summoner Romney he's gonna flash for pick himself up a double kill Slow still applied, so he's not going to follow the Thresh Prince, but yeah, I mean, I, I really think you just want to say, all right, we, we screwed up, what can we do to win the next game? And, you know, kind of just cut it short, don't, I don't know, honestly, how long they would even be able to survive at this point, they are just so far behind. Miracosta needs to pick stronger lanes in this next game. They need to try and pick winning lanes in every single lane because Walnut has proven that if they can take a lead in the laning phase, they absolutely know what they need to do to continue to extend that lead. So with that in mind, Miracosa needs to ensure 
that they do not lose laning phase as hard as they did this game. I feel like if one or two of their lanes is able to win next game, they'll have a shot. But if they pick weak lanes again, like they did this last time, I just I just really don't see how they're going to be able to win this. And um, yeah, this game is just like you said, practically already over. Uh, another thing that we might see Miracosa try and do next game, ban out that Graves or at least try to first pick it because Jess Childish has proven that he knows how much damage the champion can do and he's not afraid to flash in and burst down one of your carries. Yeah. Um, I mean, I that that is a terrific point. I mean, you don't want to see him taking Graves out again uh, in this second match. Um, but also for me, I really think that I am sexy pants needs to pick a stronger early game jungler. Sidwani is, you know, we mentioned coming into this, the team fight is there, but if you're so far behind, it's totally irrelevant. Um, and Sidwani is just not as strong as Nidalee is early in the match. Um, and as, you know, you both said, it's incredibly important for them to win, you know, hopefully two out of the three lanes in the next match. And that's going to come down to I am sexy pants and some early ganking pressure. So, you know, we saw that Vi ban coming out. I'm assuming it will be banned again. And we also saw a Rek'Sai who also has a very good early game, you know, uh, ganking uh, potential. Doesn't need that level six like I Am Sexy Pants is. Um, can get into lane with that tunnel. So we'll have to keep an eye on the jungle bans. But I really, I, I really think a, a, a jungler who can, who has some level three level four gank potential is going to be absolutely crucial for miracosa if they're going to want to escape with a victory in the lane phase i think it'd be really cool to see a jungler like shako coming out yeah because shako's yeah, yeah. one of those junglers that has such a strong ability to just turn games on their head at the very beginning uh, but a very strong siege coming out and this is really where walnut high school's team comp thrives in these tower sieges they have so much poke potential coming out from the Nidalee and the Velkaz that if Miracosa just tries to hold this tower, they're going to take so much damage for it and they just get blown up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mentioned it in the champion select. If this team gets ahead, it is going to be so difficult for them to come back. Uh, incredibly disengaging pokey comp. Um, if they're strong enough that they can play the dive game, you know you're in for a world of hurt as we just witnessed. Uh, that was a three for nothing trade and they were able to dive that turret at 22 minutes, no problem. And with that inhibitor going down mid lane, it just opens up the top mid tier tower, the bottom mid tier tower and the entire jungle of Miracosa they just have no control anymore. They've lost the entire map to Walnut High School, and Walnut can pretty much go anywhere they want with no fear. Yeah, and we can see Walnut right now taking the Scuttle Crab in front of Baron, thinking that getting that purple buff will probably aid them in just securing this victory a little bit sooner. Um, Dragon is down. They have three dragons right now, and we haven't even reached 24 minutes. I mean, they are playing the objective game very well also. Yep, so this game most likely going to be closing out pretty soon here. Walnut High School essentially has so many options, all of which will work out. They can either decide to do Baron as uh, Miracosa has absolutely no vision on it. They could probably take that Baron for free. They could split push top and bottom. They could all group top, all group bottom. And they're so far ahead in every single lane that they win the 1v1. They win the 2v2. They win the 5v5. Sometimes they might even win the 1v2. I mean, each of their champions just so fed right now. Graves, 9, 0, and 3. Almost have his, has his Bloodthirster finish. An uh, item and a half ahead of this Jinx. I can't give Bush doing a very good job there using the Frozen Tomb to totally avoid the Velkaz ultimate. Those angles gonna miss this time. Um, yeah, but they're still gonna lose the Only three part. members. The Glacial Prison though misses. That is a huge part of their team fight. And the counter burst coming from Velkaz is so huge. Lissandra able to get the shutdown bolts onto just Childish though. That is a 
big, big pickup in terms of sort of saving off the feet a little bit longer. We do have Nidalee poking around the edges. Lands that spear is going to jump in, get a, uh, you know, that kill going over to Hikari. That spear going to be avoided thanks to a flash. But now that they have all of the Poke Champions in the area, they're going to easily be able to take this one down. Uh, and then we'll probably see them either take this and keep pushing or... Yeah, it looks like they're just going to continue this push with only Sejuani there to defend. Um, and I see a Baron <laughs> in the future of Walnut High School very soon. They're not going to be able to take this top tier inhibitor tower right now because their Maokai and Graves are back at home. So yeah, definitely the smart thing to do is either back and try to do a Baron or regroup bottom lane and try to take that bot uh, mid-tier tower. And it looks like that's actually what they're opting to do. Ripping off a little bit of the jungle, taking any any potential that <laughs> that Miracosa has of getting some gold. Oh my gosh, you mentioned that life form disintegration ray. Gonna go right through the wind wall. And I mean this Velkaz is absolutely huge. I mean you can see he's built that that newer uh, static shiv AP item, Luden's Echo. Um which is, you know, kind of fun. I think it's the first time I've seen it in competitive play. And teleport being blown there from my Gankier Bush just to try to prevent that turf from being taken. And I, I, I kind of want to see some impetus from um, Walnut here. You know, what do they want to do? We've got Nidalee and Velkais coming back from base. Do they think they need the Baron? If not, it looks like they're just going to wait for them, keep poking them down in group, and just try to knock down this bottom... When you have a 17,000 gold lead, you don't even need Baron to continue to take these objectives. Mid tower is still down, and I have to give props to Walnut High School. This is probably the best rotational play I've seen out of any high school team so far this season. And I've shoutcasted quite a few matches this season, and none of them have been as clean as this game. Although, a fight breaking out here, and I think they're just so far ahead, they're just going to easily win this. Yeah, even though the fight started out 3v5, that is going to be Brom going down. And not a terrible engage in terms of going on Choi. Um, but yeah, as you mentioned, they're just so far ahead, there's nothing they can do. And they're going to take down this bottom inhibitor turret. Captain Spyro, twist advance onto I gank your bush. Very wisely, just focusing down this inhibitor. This child is, I mean, wow. Wow. It's like <laughs> they just disappeared off the map. Oh, yes, though. Poor yes, though. Yeah, you know, so this is going to be two inhibitors going down. Uh, bottom and middle. And this opens up. Possibly they could just end the game here, actually. They, they, they might be able to with these minions sort of starting to flood the base. Uh, that is going to be a good glacial prison hitting four people, but there's no follow-up to be had. And, yeah, so, you know, coming into this match, you, uh, sort of our, our lane to watch is the mid lane. Oh, man, the flash four from Akari, Akari shows you how far they are ahead. I am such a to turn on him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what are you looking for for the next game um, in terms of Miraposa in the mid lane? Because that Yasuo pick not really working out for them. I definitely don't expect to see another Yasuo. Um, I honestly don't have any idea what Isfahem can play in the middle lane, but he just needs to pick a strong laner. Uh, someone like LeBlanc or Ari that has the ability to farm safely, do burst damage, win lane, is going to be a champion that he needs to pick. Someone like Yasuo has a very slow start uh, doesn't start to get a big power spike until he hits that level like seven, level eight, uh, unless he gets early ganks. And I think a lot of this next game is going to also rely on I'm Sexy Pants, as you were saying early, ability to influence the game early on with with ganks. Yeah, and we can see some members of Miracosa going down all over the map. Lissandra and Yasua in the gray screen right now as super minions come down mid and bot lane and 
Walnuts sort of taking their time to close this one out. As you mentioned, they have pretty good rotational play. We can see Maokai backing right now. He does have teleport available, so we'll probably just see them do the, the safe, safe thing, push out this top wave. Unless they want to go ahead and win a fight right here. I am sexy pants being brought very low from Akari. He's running a little bit low on mana. And you can see he picked up the awakened Magi's. Uh, six stacks on it right now. Why not? Um, and Maokai going to walk back to his team rather than teleporting. But yeah, I mean, again, they're just so far ahead. I think they can easily take down this turret no problem especially with super minions starting to form up there in the bot lane and they are nearly nearly on the nexus turrets the last inhibitor tower is always the easiest one to grab when you have the other two inhibitors down just because the other team can't really defend because if they try to they lose the rest of their base and maokai is actually going really hard right now essentially even though he might die for this what he does is he buys time for the rest of his team to just grab that tower, although they don't even get that tower either. Honestly, that time was kind of a little bit too aggressive. That was a little bit too aggressive. I think I best it will just extend this match a little bit longer. But the rest of the team is still so strong. I think they can win this 4v5, no problem. We are 31 minutes into the game. A 20k gold lead. Four dragons to nil. Nine turrets to one. Is this going to be the final push? Miracles is doing everything they can to defend this Nexus turret. But as the super minions start to clump up, they will likely be going down. And they're going down pretty quickly without... Oh, man. Is that Glacial Prison used? I don't even... No, it wasn't. That is still up. So the engage is still there. With Maokai... Dead. Nope. Well, he's back. <laughs> he's so, back. Yeah. Malkai is back. He goes in with a twist in advance. And there is the team fight. I am Dex Man on the front line. Meanwhile, just Child is doing a lot of damage. But gets the is that damage gets the ult off on him. And he's trying to take him down. But just Child is, is able to 1v1 that with a little bit of help from Troy. Double kill going over to Nidalee. And that has got to be the game. All three inhibitors are down. Only the Nexus turns remain. And a four for nothing team fight in favor of Walnut is gonna secure the victory in game one. That was a 4v5 team fight at the end too. Walnut High School just doesn't even care though. They're so far ahead. And GG right now for Walnut High School, able to pick up game number one in relatively spectacular fashion actually. 22,000 gold ahead, won every single lane, and only lost one tower uh, this entire game. Well played by them. Well played indeed. Alrighty, well, we will be right back. We are going to hop into the lobby for game number two. So definitely don't get anywhere. It should just be a short two to five minute break. See you guys all in a few minutes.